Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video I will introduce one of the most important AC motors modern control technique, the so-called field-oriented control. Field-oriented control, FOC, is a powerful control strategy, to control torque of three-phase AC machines, with high accuracy and bandwidth. It can be implemented in either hardware or software. This is a three-phase machine. When we put currents in these windings, in such a way as to create this rotating magnetic field. If we put permanent magnet rotor inside of stator, the rotor try to follow that rotating magnetic field of the stator perfectly, in this time the motor torque is zero. If we load the motor, this difference will be different from zero. If we look at this curve plotted from a simulation of this hybrid vehicle, you can see that if the angular alignment between the rotor flux and the stator magnetic field, is the difference, is truly zero, then yes we have zero torque, but as we start applying more and more torque to our rotor, you can see that that's going to translate into further and further phase lag, where the rotor is lagging the state of flux, until we finally get to a point of 90 degrees, at that point I'm generating the most torque, that I possibly can for that given current on that motor, and if I try to apply more torque, then that I go over the fallout curve right here, and what's going to happen, is the motor is going to lose control, it's going to lose synchronization. It's just going to flop around on your bench. So the goal is obviously, to not let the motor get over the stable region, because this part of the region is unstable. At the top of that curve that's where we get maximum torque for per amp, and that's what field-oriented control, is going to allow us to do, and to allow us to do it in a stable way, so that we don't have to worry about coming out of the stable region. So the way that we do that, is we first of all need to know on our rotor what is the angle of the rotor flux, and there's different ways that we can get this. Once you know the angle of the rotor flux, then you know exactly, where you need to position your magnetic vector on the stator. We said we want that to be 90 degrees with respect to the rotor flux, because that's what gives us maximum torque per amp. In real time as this motor is spinning, in order to generate a current vector, or essentially a magnetic flux vector on the stator, to be 90 degrees with respect to the rotor flux, I'm going to apply three way the three phase currents to each one of the windings. In the next video we will show that the torque is calculated with this expression. Component IQ is the current component that control the motor torque. So to do field oriented control, let's just let's try to see it from a star level point of view, and if I'm doing it on a digital processor, I get an interrupt service routine, I go out and I measure the rotor flux angle using sensor or senseless techniques, but I need to know what the angle that rotor flux is, then I regulate the current vector to be at 90 degrees with respect to the rotor flux, by adjusting these three stator phase currents, in such a way that it creates a vector which is 90 degrees to it, and then I exit my interrupt service routine, and this is something that may be done in most cases 10,000 times a second, so that means every 100 microseconds I'm going out, and checking what the new angle of the rotor flux is, recalculating my three currents, to give me a current which is exactly quadrature to that, and then I exit the interrupt service routine. Field oriented control, FOC, was developed in the early 1970s, and made it feasible to control the induction motor, as a separately excited DC motor. All motors do field oriented control in one form or another. Even brush DC motors do FOC, they just accomplish it mechanically by using brushes and a commutator. Controlling the torque on a brush DC motor, is fairly easy to understand, so let's start with that. Remember, to control torque, we must control current. Control of current can be divided into four discrete steps as shown in this figure. Number 1, measure the current already flowing in the motor. If we want to control the current, we first have to measure it. Number 2, compare the measured current to the desired current, and generate an error signal. Number 3. Amplify the error signal to create a correction voltage. To regulate the current, we either increase or decrease the voltage on the motor's terminals. And finally step number 4, modulate the correction voltage onto the motor terminals. This is usually done with some type of power switching technique, such as PWM. Viewed as discrete operations, these four steps represent how you would accomplish torque control on a microcontroller, as an interrupt service routine, where they would be executed thousands or perhaps tens of thousands of times per second in a sequential fashion. This process only controls the magnitude of the motor current. 
The brushes and commutator on the DC motor mechanically perform field orientation. They keep the rotor current vector always oriented by 90 degrees with respect to the state of flux vector, to achieve maximum torque per amp. If you understand the process outlined in this figure, then you are well on your way to understanding field-oriented control. In fact, these same four steps are also used to do FOC on an AC motor. The main difference is that, since AC motors do not have brushes and a commutator, the process must also include the orientation part of the job. Step 1. Measure the current already flowing in the motor. In the case of a three-phase permanent magnet synchronous motor, we have three currents to control instead of just one. But for the purpose of the FOC algorithm, we only need to measure two of these currents. Step 2. Compare the measured currents to the desired currents, and generate error signals. While this comparison step is very straightforward for a brush DC motor, there are a few more operations required for an AC motor. Because the desired current ID and IQ are DC currents, and the measured currents are AC currents. All this will be explained more and more for the PMSM and induction motor in the future videos. Quadrature or Q-axis is where all the action takes place. Because this axis is quadrature to the rotor flux axis at all times, any stator current component that lies on this axis, is directly responsible for producing motor torque. For example, if you are designing an electric vehicle using FOC, when you push down harder on the accelerator pedal, you are commanding more positive Q-axis current. Conversely, when you push down harder on the brake pedal, you are commanding more negative Q-axis current. Step 3. Amplify the error signals to create correction voltages. Just like with brush DC motor torque control, we turn to our PI controller to take the current error signals and amplify them to create the motor voltages. The only difference with this step compared to a brush DC motor is that we now have two PI controllers, one for the D-axis and one for the Q-axis. And since they exist on a rotating reference frame synchronous to the rotor flux axis, both D and Q currents are DC values when the motor is operating under steady state conditions, regardless of speed. Finally step 4, modulate the correction voltages onto the motor windings. We need a voltage vector to apply to the stator windings. But VD and VQ exist on the rotating reference frame. The stator windings exist on the stationary reference frame. We need inverse path transform to find VF and V beta, and one more we need inverse Clark transform to find VA, VB and VC. We now have our three voltage values. Put them in the PWM module and then exit the interrupt service routine. By the time we get our next interrupt, the three voltages should have done their work on the motor to drive the motor currents closer to their desired values. We then do the whole process over again. On a microcontroller, all of these calculations can be done in less than 12 microseconds. Now that you now understand how to do FOC on a permanent magnet machine, it only takes one small step intellectually to understand how it works with an induction machine. In fact, the procedure is almost identical with just a few tiny exceptions. This will be demonstrated in the future. Building mathematical models of AC drives is the first step towards the design and implementation of control systems. This will be the goal of the next videos. This example shows a permanent magnet synchronous machine, PMSM, and inverter sized for use in a typical hybrid vehicle. The inverter is connected directly to the vehicle battery, but often there is also a DC-DC converter stage in between. The model can be used to design the PMSM controller selecting architecture and gains to achieve desired performance.
Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to like the video if you like it and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date.